Good afternoon. Today we're going to talk about how we can solve equations and use the properties of logarithms and exponents to work with our natural base and our natural logs. First thing I wanted to do is just remind you that these are all equivalent forms. e to the x equals a is the same thing as the natural log e, base e of a to the x. And the natural log is used so frequently that it has its own notation. So you can write it as log base e, or you can just do the abbreviated ln. And remember, e is just a number, 2.72 blah, blah, blah. So it, this works the same way it, as both a, a, a base in an exponential function or in a logarithmic function. It works the same way as any other um, base for a logarithm or an exponential function. So let's just look at some examples of rewriting as equivalent expressions. Since this is an exponential notation or an exponential function, when I rewrite it, I'm gonna write it as a logarithm. And in this case, I'm gonna use a natural log because this is ba uh, base e, or that's the base in the exponential function. So I want base e here. And I remember to do my log roll, which is basically just taking these components and moving them around. So this will be natural log of eight. And I'm going to set that equal to my exponent, which in this case is x. Easy schmeasy. I do the same thing here, except this time I have a natural log. And so I want to write this using um, an exponential base e. So I'm going to use the e is not written there, but we know that this is a natural base. I'm going to roll my log. Moving the 5 and the x, they're going to trade positions a little bit. So my, um, the 5 becomes my exponent. And this should evaluate to the value of x. Hopefully this is familiar. We could do the same thing here. Just because this is a funky number does not mean that we do anything differently. I'm going to write it as an exponent. And I'm going to use e as my, x, as my base for my exponential function because this is a natural log. I'm going to roll my base and switch the components so that my exponent is this weird decimal, but that's okay because it's just a number. And I set that equal to the x. And there we have some good examples of equivalent expressions. Next, we're going to look at how we can take some of the properties of logarithms and use those to condense or to simplify expressions. The first one I'm going to look at in example four has two properties in play. I notice there's a subtraction sign, which means I can use the division property. There's also a numeral, a number in front of the logarithm, which tells me I can use my power property. So I already know that I'm going to write this as a natural log and that it's going to involve a division component. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw that. I recognize that because of the power property, this 2 is going to become an exponent, 10 to the second. And the 5 just stays a 5. So we, wrote, we rewrote it. And that looks spectacular. I can simplify this, though. That is equivalent to a natural log. 10 squared is really 100 over 5. And this can be simplified one more time. 10, 100 divided by 5 is the natural log of 20. So that would be my resultant simplified condensed expression. I'm going to use the same uh, techniques over here. Again, I notice I can use the division property because of the subtraction sign. And both of my terms in this case are going to use the power property because there's a number in front of my natural log. So I'm going to write this as natural log. I'm just going to step it out a little bit. I'm going to um, take this 3, and I'm going to make it my exponent. So this is 8 to the third. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I know this is division. So I'm going to divide that by um, natural log of, let me just check here. Um, this is really going to be 4, and the 2 is going to go to become the exponent. So I can write it like that. All of this would be in a set of parentheses, kind of a crooked set of parentheses there. And then if I want to go simplify this, I need to have a common base. I recognize that 8 and 4 are both 
powers of two. So I could rewrite this as natural log. Instead of writing eight to the third, I can write this as two to the third power, which is equivalent to eight. And then this would be again to the third power. And over here, four is really two squared. And this is being raised to the second power. All right, I'm on my way. I can simplify this further. I remember that this is two to the third power and I have three copies of them. So that results in two to the ninth power. In my denominator, I have two squared and I have two copies of them. That's two to the fourth power. And now if you remember, you can, um, anything divided by itself is just one. And so this actually simplifies to the natural log, and I forgot my natural log here, my apologies, natural log of two to the fifth, nine minus four, that's how we deal with our exponents. And then lastly, I can simplify this to the natural log of 32. Either of these two expressions is fine, but this is probably our best result. There are lots of ways to break this apart. This is just one way. Let's do one more example because this is kind of weird stuff. Natural log of 40, I'm gonna leave that alone for a moment. I'm gonna rewrite this using an exponent, using the property. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as, a, as an addition statement for the moment. And I'm gonna say this is one half. And if I take this power, this multiple and make it my exponent, it would look something like this. And then I'm not gonna change natural log of x just yet. Because this is an addition statement, I'm gonna be using my product property. And I, you can either simplify this first or you could go ahead and write it as an, a multiplication statement. It's gonna be the natural log of 40 times 1 half squared times x. And from here, I just do a little bit of more, more simplification. This is natural log of 40 times 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth times x. Conveniently, 40 times 1 fourth is just 10. And so I end up with 10x as the, um, in the natural log, natural log base e of 10x. So that's how we can simplify and condense. Some more examples of simplifying might look like this. To, to um, simplify some of these, ah, I slid up too, too soon. To simplify some of, um, some of these examples, I'm gonna need to use my inverse property. The inverse properties of natural logs and uh, natural bases tell me that e to the natural log of x is just equal to x where essentially the taking the natural log and uh, up, or having e to the natural log, they cancel each other out, they undo each other in the same way that the natural log of base of e to the x, those simplify and cancel each other out. Those properties undo each other, inverse functions undo each other. And that's convenient. We can use that in a lot of different ways. To simplify, if I'm taking the natural log of E, these kids undo each other, they cancel each other out, and I'm left with a simplified expression of 1.15f. See how simple that was? In example eight, natural log of E simplifies, natural log of E simplifies, and I end up with 2x being added to x, which simplifies to 3x. Similarly here, using going the opposite way, I've got, um, I'm gonna write this, I noticed that there's an e and my exponent has a natural log in it, so those could simplify and undo each other. But first I have this two in front here, so I need to first use the power property to rewrite this as an exponent. And when I do that, I end up with e, the exponent is natural log of x squared. And now I can see that these are inverse proper inversions will undo each other. And I'm left with just x squared as my simplified expression. 
I'm showing you a few more examples here. These follow the same rules as the three that we just covered. Um, so I'm not going to go into them in depth, but I did want to show you that after you use the power property to write this exponent um, as an exponent with another exponent, then you can take the natural log of, or raise e to the natural log, and those will undo each other, inverse operations, and you're left with just x plus one raised to the third power. No need to multiply this out. This is considered simplified. In example 11, taking the natural log of e, those are inverse operations and undo each other, and you're left with x plus four. And then lastly, here in example 12, I, would want, I wanted to first write this natural log using a negative exponent so that I can take the natural log of e more readily. And I remember that a fraction can always be re rewritten as an exponent. So um, in this case, you flip and negate. So one half can be written as two to the negative one, one over e to the third can be rewritten as e to the negative third. And when I do that, taking the natural log of e, undoes, they undo, undo each other, and I'm left with just negative three. So that's how we can simplify. And we can 